Hello guys. So in the previous section, we went ahead and built a React agent using Langchain. In this section, we'll actually go ahead and look at what are the drawbacks of using React agents using Langchain and where does LangGraph actually come into the picture. So let's look at an advantage actually of React agents. So we saw that the React agents are flexible, right? Any state is possible right here. Okay, so what we mean by that is we start the execution and if we have the first tool, it executes the first tool and comes to an end. If there is a tool two, it executes the particular tool two to figure out the problem and comes to an end. And there is also situations where the tool one could be executed first and the tool two could be executed first. And it could also be the opposite. Okay, so we in the previous section, we saw it executed two tools, right? First, it used the Tavili search tool to make a Google search and then figure out, you know, when was the SpaceX launch was, and then it figured out the current time. It could have also done it the opposite way. It could have also figured out the current system time and then went ahead and did the Tavili search as well. So that is what we are seeing right here. Okay, so React agents are very, very, very flexible. But high flexibility can also mean less reliability. Okay, so this is an example that we saw as well, wherein, you know, the tool one keeps on getting called again and again and again, and it goes on till infinity. Thankfully, uh, Google Gemini, it stopped it right there. But, you know, infinite loops are a pretty big problem with React agents. There could be a couple of reasons why this happens. We see that, you know, we did not define the tools correctly. The LLM is not capable enough or the prompting doesn't define a clear end condition. Okay, now. So uh, basically we have the chains on one hand, we have the React agent on the other hand. So this is what we saw just now. The React agent is very, very flexible, but it is less reliable because it is not really in our control completely. All right. And on the other hand, we have chains right here. We, we saw that chains are like a fixed assembly line, right? It is not really flexible, but it is more reliable, right? So we need something that has the best of both worlds. We need something that is going to be flexible, but at the same time reliable. And that is exactly where land graphs comes into the picture. Okay, so it is going to be flexible as well as reliable. So this state machine that we see right here, this is where land graph comes into the picture. All right, so let's, what is land graph? Let's look at the textbook definition of what is a land graph. Uh, it is a framework for building controllable persistent agent workflows with built-in support for human interaction, streaming, and state management. It uses graph data structure to achieve this thing. So this is a very simple preview of how the graph data structure looks like and how we can actually build agents. So we have the start node right here and we have the agent right here. There is an action that agent takes and then it can continue this particular thing. And then once it has reached the end point, it comes to an end, okay? So I don't want you to think too much about what this is, but just know for now that this is how the structure looks like. So let's look at the, some of the key features of land graph. So the first one is looping and branching abilities. We've already touched upon it in a, uh, a few sections ago, but let's look at it again. It supports conditional statements and loop structures, allowing dynamic execution paths based on state. State persistence. Automatic saves and manages state, supporting pause and resume for long running conversations. Human machine interaction support. It allows for inserting human review during execution, supporting state editing and modification with flexible interaction control mechanisms. Let's look at the fourth one. Streaming processing. Supports streaming output and real time feedback on execution status to enhance user experience. Seamless integration with Langchain. Reuses existing Langchain components, supports the Langchain expression language, and offers rich tool and model support. And now you might have a question, why do we use the graph data structure for building land graphs? Why not use some other easier data structure to handle it? So the answer is that you can see that a lot of the papers, a lot of the research papers that have been published to solve difficult problems, they all use the graph data structure because it is flexible, but at the same time, it is controllable. It gives you a lot of flexibility, but at the same time, we can actually have a lot of autonomy, a lot of autonomous decision making baked in into those particular, into those data structures. And that is it for the section. In the next section, we will see what are the core components of land graph. So I'll see you there. 
Hello guys, in this section we will look at what are the core components of land graph. So you can see that the core components, there are four core components. We have nodes, edges, conditional edges and state. So I'll give you a very simple example to understand these different components. And that example is the reflection agent pattern. This is something that we will be looking at sort of deep diving into the later part of the course. But for now, I'll give you a very small overview of what this is capable of. So whenever we talk about a reflection agent pattern, we're always going to have something that is going to generate something. And we're also always going to have something that is going to critique that particular thing. Basically, you know, this is not good. This is not right. We have to make this better. So this is the criticizing component and we have the generation component. So as a whole, what this is doing is one agent is going to generate a tweet. Okay. So this agent's only primary job is to generate a tweet and anytime you know, something else criticizes that particular, you know, tweet, it is going to make the tweet better. So this only focuses on generation. And this, this LLM's only job is to criticize a particular tweet. It is going to say, okay, to make this viral, you have to make this short, you have to make this punchier, you have to, you know, add a call to action. Okay, so that is what this does. So basically, whenever a graph is going to start, we're always going to have the start node right here. And then right after the start node is executed, the control flow is coming to the generation tweet LLM. Uh, right after the tweet is generated, there is going to be two different options. Okay, so there's going to be two different options. It can either go to this particular criticize tweet LLM or it can end the process right here. Okay, so it is, let's say it is going to come to this particular node. In that, in that case, this LLM is going to look at the tweet that this LLM generated and it is going to critique it. And that is why we have an arrow pointing right here. Okay. So it, this can loop through several times to make the tweet really good, to polish it, to iteratively make it better and better and better. And after a certain number of iterations that we specify as developers, it can actually, instead of going to this particular branch, it can end this particular process. And the reason why I wanted to rush through it is because we are just learning the core components of land graph right now. So let's look at what are the core components. So these things that you see right here, this start block, this generate tweet LLM block, this end block. So these are what is basically called nodes. Okay. So if I come back here, this nodes that you see right here, these are the nodes. Okay. And let's look at the second one edges. So what are these edges? So you see these straight, these lines. These are dotted. These are not edges. These lines are the edges. Basically, whatever connects two nodes are what is called edges. All right. Let's look at the third one, conditional edges. What does this mean? So I've actually made it very clear that this dotted line is what is going to be called the conditional edge because right after the execution of this node, it can either go here or it can either go here based on a condition. All right. So that is why we have a conditional edge right here. And finally, we have state right here. So state, uh, it should be pretty intuitive to, to understand state. Even in this particular simple example, you can, you can sort of imagine that this LLM is generating something. And then this LLM, this red LLM is going to give a feedback. And then this green LLM is going to generate something for that again. So the entire context needs to be maintained, right? So that is why the state is also going to be a core component of land graph. So I hope that makes sense. In the next section, we are going to be deep diving into what this reflection agent pattern is, how to build this, what are the, uh, why do we even have to build it? What are the real world applications? And we'll actually be building it from scratch using code as well. So I'll see you there.